Virtual Wrapper is a great tool to keep your development environment clean and tidy and help you be uh, more productive in the long term. So let's see how it works. So we start from installation and configuration. So first of all, here I am currently logged in with an admin account on this machine and I will switch to a non-admin account since you don't need that to install Virtual Wrapper. Great, so now we are logged in as a non-admin user. First thing we do is install virtual env because this is needed by virtual env wrapper. We can do that by using pip install. In this case, we are using the option user because we are a non-admin user. Here we are, virtual env has been installed. We can now move on and install virtual env wrapper. Here we go, we have now successfully installed Virtual and Wrapper and we can now move on to configure it. Configuration is as easy as adding just a couple of lines to your shell startup file. So let's see how it looks like at the moment for me. It's very simple and here we are going to add our lines these lines, I've already written them on another file, so we have a look. So here we have these three lines that we can add to our file. In fact, we only need two of them. Second one can be commented away. With the first line, we are setting the path for the work on directory. In this case, we choose home slash dev slash virtual ends, a path that currently does not exist on this uh, account. The third line is uh, a way to source um, a script which comes with the installation of virtual and wrapper. The second line is used for a more advanced usage of virtual and wrapper that at the moment we do not need and therefore it's just commented away and the package will work uh, just fine. So we now save it. This point we have to source it. What has happened at this moment is that virtual and wrapper has created the folders that we have set up in the bash profile file. As you can see here, this is the home dev slash virtual environment and has included there some files. Okay, we can have a look at this path. Right, this is what inside there. So now we are ready to start working with virtual mwrap. First thing we do is create a virtual environment. That's done very easily with an mk virtual env command which is followed by the name of the virtual environment. So let's say we want to call it Candy Rack because we are building a recommendation engine suggesting candies. So now what it's doing is creating the virtual environment for us. So it's creating a folder with a name we have chosen for our virtual environment inside the path we have specified in the bash profile. If we now have a look again at this path, we will find the folder for the candy recommendation. As you can see now, we have this folder over here. Something else we can notice is that after creating the virtual environment, virtual and wrapper has activated the virtual environment and we can notice that by looking here at the far left of our uh, terminal command line. Now we have this candy rack, this is the name of the virtual environment. Before we didn't have anything. Right, so now we are already inside the virtual environment. So we can start doing our work. One characteristic of virtual environment, and that's the reason, one of the reasons why we use them, is that when you create it, it's completely clean and tidy. There is no other packages installed. You can have a look at the packages which are currently installed on your virtual environment using the command pip freeze. This will output on the standard output. 
as you can see there is only the wheel package which is needed to install other packages but maybe you want to install something uh, you want to build a recommendation engine so maybe you want to use the scikit package so let's install it so now it's collecting all the material it needs to install it bam it's done if we now check what's the situation with the package installed in our virtual environment so we just run pip freeze we will see another line here we have another line so now we have these two packages and we not only know which package we have we also know which version we have installed right now we can start doing our work maybe we want to move inside the folder which has been created for our virtual environment we can of course navigate it with simple call mean cd and then our path right but Virtual environment has provided for us a shorter way with a new command, just cd virtual env no space altogether is a command. Well, of course, you should type it correctly. Right, and what has happened now is that we have been moved to our working folder for the current active virtual environment, which is this one. At this point, we just continue with our work, we create our files and so on, and then let's say we have finished to work on this uh, virtual environment. We, will, we want to, to go out of it, and so we use the command deactivate. Now again, as you can see, in parentheses, the parentheses at the far left of the command line has disappeared, we are again in our normal environment. At this point, maybe we want to create a new environment. So mk let's say candy2, a new a new project which is somehow connected with the first one. So what's happening? Again now virtual m wrapper has created a new folder and it has moved us inside the the the, uh, the new the new environment. I mean it has activated the new environment. If we want to move inside the new environment, we just type again cd virtual amp. And now we are inside candy2 path. If we check what we have installed here, well, we only have wheel because this is uh, just a new virtual environment. But sometimes we want to uh, you to install in a new environment the same packages that we had previously installed in another in another virtual environment. So let's say we want Candy2 to have the same packages that we have installed in Candy Rec. So we have to move to the Candy Rec virtual environment. The command which is used to move from one environment to the other is work on. So I can just type work on space and then the name of the environment candy recommendation so now I have switched the environment as you can see from candy 2 I moved to candy rec now what I want to do is to create a file with a list of the packages installed which is very simply redirecting the output of pip freeze into a text file Candy. We can call it candy requir rec requirements. Right, if we have a look at what is inside, we just see these couple of lines. Now we go to the new environment, which is where we, work, uh, we want to install all these packages, and we do that again using work on candy2 this time. So now we are in the environment where we want to install the, the, the packages. So we use so we just use pip install with this option uh, uh, R and candy requirements. What this is doing is installing all of the packages which are present in the text file candy rec into the current active uh, virtual environment. We can check it with pip freeze and now we see we have scikit-learn without installing it directly. 
we can now go out of our uh, virtual environment with deactivate. The command work on also works without argument. In this case, it will list the current available virtual environments. And you can then choose which one you want. Another useful command is to remove an environment. And that's remove which env, followed by the environment you want to remove. Let's say candy2. This will remove the virtual environment. As you can see, it's not available anymore. And if we go to the path, we only have candy rack. Candy2 has disappeared. This concludes the tutorial. To get more information, visit our website at www.lucanaso.it and then go to the blog section. Here, look for the post How to use Virtual M Wrapper. In this post, you can find all of the things covered in this tutorial and also some extra content so that you can go beyond the standard usage of Virtual M Wrapper. Thank you for watching.